Welcome back. And uh, in keeping with Reef Week 2015, our conversation is now going to be focused on the lionfish. And the lionfish is the only fish in Belize that we want you to eat. Eat as much as you can, uh, fish as much as you can, uh, get them out of the water and on your plate. That's what we're aiming towards. So uh, uh, joining us for this conversation is Jennifer Chapman, uh, Country Coordinator for Blue Venture. And we're joined by Isaias Mahil, Marine Protected Area Coordinator for the Fisheries Department. Good morning Good and morning. welcome. Thank you for morning, having us. Morning. Now, I want us to uh, obviously rehash uh, the lionfish mm -hmm. um, and why it is a threat to our reef. Yeah, so, well, here's a picture of the invasive lionfish. This actually originally comes from the Indo-Pacific Oceans mm -hmm. and was accidentally introduced to the Caribbean. It's been in Belize since 2008, and we have been recording huge quantities of reef fish in their diet. They really focus on reef fish. And we actually just had our first record of a lobster in a lionfish stomach as well. Oh. So we're very concerned about the impacts that lionfish will have on Belize's fisheries yeah. in and, general. And, what, and another concern is the amount of fish that they eat. They, they're very voracious. They eat all day, all day. Uh, you could find up to 16 little fish in their stomach. You could find a, a, a fish of two thirds its size. So they're really, really big feeders. And they're having a very big impact on our reef. Yeah. Now, obviously, one of the things that uh, we have discussed before was the growing population. And this is not something unique to Belize. The mm -hmm. entire Caribbean mm -hmm. and coastal areas are trying to battle this issue. Mm -hmm. um, but are we seeing any progress here locally in terms of a reduction of the population? So it depends where you look basically mm -hmm. is the answer i mean i recently came back from a trip um which was heading out around goff's key area and there are a number of sartaneja fishers that i know who are working in that area who are targeting lionfish mm -hmm. and it was really bare i mean it was pretty amazing there were not very many lionfish in those areas that those fishers are working so it's encouraging it shows that it does work and that when you fish and target lionfish you can reduce the population However, unfortunately, the market isn't quite big enough now for that impact to be felt across the entire Belize Barrier Reef system. So we still see extremely high densities in some areas. And mm -hmm. we've just finished a round of surveys looking into that. And you said you've uh, done your counts in Placencia and Bacalar Chico? Yes, that's right. So what are, what are you reporting at this point? So definitely at depth, they're much more abundant. That's not a huge surprise, um, considering that fishers can't access the very deep reefs. Mm -hmm. In one site of Placencia, the initial results show a density of up to 550 per hectare of reef. So huge densities of lionfish in the deep sites of Placencia. Um, in Bacalar Chico, we have a lower density of about 27 on average per hectare of reef. Um, and I think that's because we have a really active pro program there going out culling lionfish on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So we see huge ranges of densities and definitely at depth they're much more abundant. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing as well is our sizes. Um, in the deeper water there are the big ones. In How big are we talking? Um, what's the biggest one? I, have, think, I think 18. The, the biggest one recorded that I know of from Belize was by Reef CI in um, Sapodilla Keys and they had one of 45 centimeters or something like that's that. That's what this? I mean, yeah, big. That's, that's yeah. big. <laughs> about yeah. 18 inches. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah, and in the shallow waters and the seagrass and the mangroves, we're, we're finding a lot of the very juvenile mm -hmm. small ones. Um, but that, that's the difference because of, of what Jennifer mentioned was that fishers have access to the shallow waters but in the deeper waters because we don't allow yeah. um, to use scuba and spare. Uh, that's, a, a, that's our shortfall. Yeah. Now, this is, this is an important area in terms of having uh, fisher folk involved in the elimination or the reduction of the population. Mm -hmm. What has the engagement been like in terms of getting, because it's more work, mm -hmm. um, even in catching and cleaning mm -hmm. or, or preparing for mm -hmm. processing, um, and the market, as you mentioned, people don't necessarily go out and demand, I want to eat lionfish. Mm -hmm. So uh, what has the engagement been like in getting people on board to get uh, to go out and, and seek lionfish? Well, under, um, I think we were with Linda Searle mm -hmm. here some time ago, where we had a compact project yeah. uh, that dealt with lionfish. And a major part of that project was education. Mm -hmm. um, 
because we needed to pass the information out. And it, it triggered very well with the scuba, uh, with the tour guides that use scuba. Uh, with the fishers, not too much because you mentioned about a lot of work and it's very small ones and mm -hmm. the prices and the market. Um, but now we're seeing that they're understanding because they're, they, when they kill them, they see how much little fish are in their stomachs when they're cleaning them. And they're saying like, man, we need to do something. We want to help. And mm -hmm. So they're engaging themselves, as Jennifer mentioned, uh, in areas that they traditionally fish. Mm -hmm. They're engaging a lot in, in killing lionfish. You can, feel, uh, you can see now as part of their catch is lionfish. Yeah. I think uh, the other thing that's really important to mention is that because it is such a delicious fish to eat, mm -hmm. a number of the really top-end restaurants in Belize have started to serve it as a luxury, as a luxury fish. You know, it's so tasty. It's so adaptable to lots of different dishes and so the price of lionfish is actually increasing. Um, I've heard of some restaurants paying up to 15 Belize dollars a pound wow. for lionfish fillet so it's getting a really really good price. Mm -hmm. um, not in all restaurants and I would say that that's that's really the the next challenge is recognizing I think as consumers try it and they realize that this is really a good fish this is really worth a good price and once it reaches ten dollars a pound twelve dollars a pound that's a very good price and that's very encouraging to fishers yeah. to start targeting lionfish then it so. becomes worth the effort exactly and as exactly. well like um like right now the lobster season is closed so we're promoting for them to go and, and look for lionfish mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're working with jennifer and some other partners uh, throughout the country to try and get this price a uh, very good price for them so that they don't mind uh, going the extra mile and, and doing all the work mm -hmm. I'd imagine there has to be some sort of balance, that it is uh, a fish that will get a good return for the fishermen and mm -hmm. their effort, but also affordable enough that people can go into a restaurant and say, I will buy, I will buy this fish, mm -hmm. or a store, I should say, right? Is that what you're trying to achieve? Yeah. Yeah, and that's something that we're still trying to figure out where that balance point is. Yeah. So, I mean, if we look at lobster, for example, that's a premium fisheries product, and that is fished regularly and people will have it when it's a special occasion or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the same sort of market that lionfish okay. is, is to feed into because it does take longer, fishers need to receive a good price, and it is an extremely high quality meat that you get from it. So I think that's, that's the sort of market that we're going for, which okay. will encourage high volume fishing to supply that, that market. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess environmentally conscious people can decide mm -hmm. to buy lionfish absolutely um, just because of the benefits that they know mm -hmm. uh, come yeah. from being able to get it on their plate mm -hmm. now the strategy for the control of the population mm -hmm. um, what exactly is in the works from the fisheries department in terms of allowing for uh, some kind of control to happen in, in our waters well we um, got embarked with uh the International Coral Reef Initiative, which mm -hmm. is uh, a worldwide uh, uh, coral reef man managers. And, um, and basically, we keep together as a Caribbean, as a region, to come out with a response and a strategy. Uh, this was adopted uh, two years ago mm -hmm. by ICRI and by Belize. From there, uh, we work on our own response plan mm -hmm. based on the data that we were collecting from the compact project, from Jennifer's work from other partners uh, a Dong Sol Tide, Reef CI, who are mm -hmm. C. Um, and that was included in our response plan. So we, last week, we actually finalized our response plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it's being disseminated to uh, cooperatives, to the tour operators, tourism industry, so that they can see in that plan what is their role. And uh, us, um, we facilitated a, a, a permitting system in Belize, we have a law that that prohibits spear fishing while you scuba, scuba. Uh, but there is a, a a section in the regulation that allows the fisheries administrator to be able to give you a permit, mm -hmm. and um, we um, employ that approach. And so, tour operators, tour guides that are scuba diving, once they are scuba diving, they spear them. Now that created another problem now, because <laughs> they are not bringing them out; they're chunking it and feeding other fish. And that's creating a, a, a problem in the, in the sense that um, in the areas, because the frequent areas, they're, they're, they're diving areas that they usually use. Uh, now, as, as fish see divers, they know there's going to be lionfish. And now even sharks are getting a little, you know, I want to see when I will get my lionfish. So 
uh, that's another thing that we know need, we, we didn't see it in our response plan, and then we need to embark on a final solution to that. Yeah. But yeah, the, the strategies, it basically called for, uh, for monitoring, yeah. for enforcement because of that um, regulation, um, control, research, and um, awareness. Awareness is the biggest part in our strategy because, we, like you said, how will people know that this is a delicious fish? How will people know that I can, I can get it this, in this uh, top shelf mm -hmm. restaurants? So awareness is going to be a very big mm -hmm. role that we know we will have to find some funds to invest. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. Now, let's talk about what the impact of the growth of this population means. The last mm -hmm. time you were here, you shared a story about uh, opening up a, a lionfish and seeing baby parrotfish. Yes. And, uh, you know, it really is one of the things that we don't think about. Mm -hmm. the, we know the impact, but how bad can it get if we are not able to control it? Well, a study, <clears throat> sorry, a study which I've read recently shows an average decline of 65% of native fish populations and a maximum decline of over 90%. So it can be very, very severe. And that's at extremely high lionfish population densities that that occurred. We're not at that level, thankfully, but we need to prevent ourselves from coming to that level. I think something else which is important to, to just bring up is in December, one of our field scientists was conducting a dissection on a lionfish, and we found the first confirmed record of a lobster in a lionfish stomach. Is um, it a full-grown lobster, a baby lobster? A tiny little one, and it wasn't a spiny lobster. It's worth pointing out. It was a slipper lobster, which is not the fishery, the primary fishery target. It's just close and concerning and um, we're still not sure what implications this might have on the line on the lobster fishery but it's just a nerve it's a yeah it, it makes you, it makes me feel nervous do they eat anything is is that what we're noticing yeah they're generalist Every, predators <laughs> they basically they have a huge mouth and mm -hmm. they they corral their prey with their fins and so mm -hmm. they create a kind of corner them with with their fins and then when they open their mouth, it sort of sucks everything in. And so we find huge numbers of shrimp, huge numbers of um, small juvenile fish. We've found grouper, snapper, parrotfish, surgeonfish. Grunts, I mean, grunts, grass, you name it. Now lobster. Now yeah. lobster as well. So yeah, they're eating literally everything. Do they aim for the juvenile population of these, of these fish, of these uh, marine products? Or um, it's whatever it's size. Whatever fits in their mouth. You can see in this picture, they have a huge mouth. So we consider anything that's up to 15 centimeters long to be vulnerable to lionfish predation. And another thing on, on, on natural balance that we have seen was that uh, while well in Belize, we, we have targeted the NASA grouper. Mm -hmm. And the NASA grouper is the only one that has been documented to, to feed on, on these lionfish. That's naturally, 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 exactly. naturally, <laughs> naturally. Lots of them will eat them once they're dead. <laughs> when, but they, when they're feed, but yeah. naturally, the NASA grouper. And, and well, mm -hmm. we have been seeing our numbers are, mm -hmm. because we targeted every year our numbers. When Wait, so the span. lionfish eats the grouper, no, the, the baby group. grouper. Yes. And Lion the grouper also eats the lionfish. The big grouper. The so big, big group. NASA grouper Gru the NASA will grouper eat only. just the NASA grouper. So we grouper. need the baby groupers to survive the lionfish to get big enough to eat the lionfish. Yes, yeah. that's, that's basically <laughs> one <laughs> strategy. Right, this is my non-scientific <laughs> strategy. It's pretty accurate. No, it's good. Very good. Now, I think that obviously when we talk about uh, the lionfish itself, and, and when now that you've explained just the extent as to the damage that it can mm -hmm. cause, are there any experiences in other parts of the world where they have been able to successfully reduce their population that perhaps their practice can be employed here as well? Not, not really. I, Ali, everybody's like, struggling. Everybody's struggling. Yes. Everybody's trying to come up with a response mm -hmm. plan, which is the theme Caribbean Regional Response Plan. Everybody's using that as a framework. And we might include some little site-specific activities yeah. um, based on depths, based on the islands that, that make our barrier reef. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, everybody is just having programs to, to, to um, eliminate them. What, what other country, one, one thing that um, Honduras is doing, which has attracted us, was that they have used the diving industry 
I know they're doing a diving uh, lionfish tourism. Ah, That's see, I was thinking that too in my strategies. <laughs> they bring, <laughs> they bring <laughs> tourists and train them for two, three days. Yeah. And then they will take them for three, four days more. A safe, save the reef type of yeah, scuba tour. Yeah, and, and mm -hmm. they're making income and they're helping the environment. So mm -hmm. that's something that uh, some tour operators have approached us. Yeah. Uh, especially the big operators it's from San Pedro and Placencia. Mm -hmm. And it's something that we want to um, take a look and come up with a plan mm -hmm. so that everybody knows exactly what is allowed and not, what, what they shouldn't be doing. Because mm -hmm. uh, when you see a, a grouper down there and you have your little sling, it, it might might be some kind of... Um, might be a bit tempting. <laughs> tempting. <laughs> so you need to yeah. make sure that it's just the lionfish. And that's the only uh, um, um, equipment that we have given permission to be used. That's kind of like this, the trident. Three prongs. The three prong trident. trident. Yeah. That's the only one that is being allowed right now to be used in the country. Is that because that's most specific to the lionfish? Yeah, and it's kind of harder to, to spare any other fish with, with some kind of yeah. that design. Being proactive in your, <laughs> in your approach. Yeah. And, and the entire Caribbean, that's the only one that has been uh, approved as well. So it's, it's something that we're replicating. Yeah. I, I, and, you know, I, I can understand how that will be a concern because it's a good faith operation, really. Mm -hmm. If you have scuba divers going down with a spare, uh, you really don't know what they will be sparing. Um, yeah. So yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. So it's something that we have, we're taking a look at it, but um, we'll have to study very yeah. carefully. Yeah. Now, there's also been as the example you pointed out the last time you were here, um, an education portion to have people know how to handle lionfish. Mm -hmm. um, how equipped are the fishermen who are working with them? And uh, how do you plan on disseminating that information so people don't feel scared yeah. in touching them? So, yeah, we've held a number of safe handling demonstrations with fishers and workshops as well. We did this along with the Sartaneja Fishermen Association last year as well. And basically, during those demonstrations, we're showing people which ones are the venomous spines. Um, I think it's really important for people to be aware that there are spines on the underside as well as on the top. Mm -hmm. so, so here you can see they're cutting off the spines along the dorsal fin, which is where 13 of the venomous spines are, but there are actually another five on the belly. So it's oh. important. To, they're very small, so they're harder to see. So it's very important to to be aware of that and to cut off all of the fins and spines from the belly as well, just to be certain. So you cut the top specifically. Cut the top. And then you'll cut the belly spines as well. Exactly. Just cut all to be safe. Just, just cut them all to be safe. And then yeah. once they're off, it's just like any regular fish. So you can just clean it or fillet it however you would yeah, yeah. any other fish. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that we always encourage fishers to do, um, or anyone who's planning on going out doing any lionfish culling activities, is to bring with them a thermos flask filled with hot water. And it could even have your morning coffee if you wanted, that's mm -hmm. fine. But if you get stung, the best thing you can do is immediately put your hand into that hot water, or whichever, the, I'm assuming hot your liquid, hand is yeah. the part which is stung. Yeah. So put your hand directly into that and leave it there for 20 to 30 minutes, and that will neutralize the venom. Okay. Um, if you do it quickly, like straight away, you won't have a reaction, and you won't have this painful swelling which is associated with a sting, which is yeah. sore but very easily prevented. Yeah. Or, and, and that's why uh, you have a lot of your trainings going on in terms of how to catch them, how to handle them. Exactly. We mm -hmm. have had a lot of demonstrations at different events, um, like the National Trade Show, we had uh, the fair, mm -hmm. the five F fair mm -hmm. from our ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, at the Lab Star Fest, mm -hmm. we attend and we show people um, we make them taste it as well. Yeah. So that's another awareness that we have been building in, in having people actually try it because a lot of people are afraid. But then we eat it and then they say, we eat it, then okay, <laughs> they'll try it. <laughs> but it's very nice and then they come back for seconds all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, yeah. it's something that is working. Yeah. Yeah. And we will have tasters as well at the uh, fair on Sunday. Yeah. 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 So people get to see the handling of the, the lionfish and also to taste it as well. Yeah. Exactly. Let's talk about the booth, that, uh, the presentation you guys will be putting out at the Reef Fair on mm -hmm. Sunday. Yeah, so um, we'll be having, Blue Ventures will be having a booth which is quite close to the fisheries department booth as well. And we'll have a very heavy focus on lionfish there. So we're going to have um, activities and games for kids, we're going to have different activities for older visitors to the booth as well. So it's for adults and children um, mm -hmm. of all ages. We're going to have lots of leaflets and booklets and 
takeaway items and um, also these tasters. So we're going to have lots of lionfish tasters. So hopefully everybody who comes by BTL Park on Sunday will get to try lionfish. Will there also be the lionfish jewelry and earrings on sale there too? Yes, yeah. we will have some lionfish jewelry on sale there as well. Actually, um, one of the women's groups in Sartaneja has started making jewelry Excellent. out of lionfish as well, yeah. which has been really successful because just by buying those tails, it adds up to 40% of the value to the fish's catch. Yeah. So it's another way to help fishes return their in yeah. investment. So they'll sell the, the filleted meat and also the and fins. And also the fins, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Can't go wrong we will, we will be having a the tasting event as well, and then mm -hmm. we will be having some. Are you going to be cooking it, Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we will mm. be doing the. the <laughs> we're going to be having some live specimens so people can actually see them. Okay. Um, alive. That's more or less the awareness, and again we, with a lot of educational material to distribute. Mm -hmm. All right, so definitely a reason to head out to the fair on Sunday. It starts in the afternoon. Starts at midday. At midday. Yeah. And uh, you can be able to sample your lionfish and learn more as well. Mm -hmm. Pick up your jewelry um, mm -hmm. and be a part of the uh, protection of our barrier reef. Exactly. Right? So I want to thank you all for joining us. Anything else that you would like to say at this point? Just thank you really to all of our partners and people we work with on the lionfish stuff. So Sea out of Placencia, Tide and Reef Sea in PG. Sartaneja Fishermen Association, mm -hmm. Fisheries Department, of Ali course, Marine is a key Reserves. to find all the marine <laughs> reserves. Ecomar, I mean, there are so many partners. I really hope I haven't missed anyone off there. But um, yeah, so thank you to, to all. Audubon, of course, yeah. Uh, all right, and Isaias yeah. will come and taste from your pot on Sunday. Yes, all right? you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll give reviews live on air on Monday. Okay, okay we're looking forward to it. <laughs> all right, thank you once again. We're going to go ahead and take a break when we come back. We'll be talking to the owner of Carpe Diem about her uh, homemade body scrubs, so stay tuned.